In this video, I'm going to be featuring this and this and this too. So stay tuned, you film lovers. So I went out with a good mate of mine on Saturday and he said, Roger, I've got something for you. He went to his car, he came back with this massive case. I thought, what's he got in there? I've opened it up and it's full of old cameras. And my mate's granddad was a keen photographer years ago and he had all these cameras sitting in his loft and my mate had found them in the loft and uh, straight away he phoned me up and he told me what he had. And I said to him, don't get rid of them. I said, they're worth money. I said, keep hold of them, or if you need to, sell them. And this was years ago, and it was only this weekend that he said, Rog, he went, I'm never going to sell them. He said, I'm never going to use them. They're only going to sit in the loft gathering dust. He said, I'd rather give them to you because I know that you're going to use them and enjoy them. And he said, I know that my granddad will want them to go to someone that's going to uh, enjoy the use of, the, of his old cameras. So I was like, okay. He went, the only thing is you can't sell them. And I said, well, no, of course not. So he's basically given me a long-term loan, all these cameras to play with. And amongst those Nikon cameras, I'll get to those in a moment, was this Bronica ETRS medium format 645 camera, which I was quite excited to see because I've never handheld one of these uh, before. And this was literally sitting in the case getting battered. There was no lens cap on the front of it. And if you look at the condition, it's pretty poor. But when I put a battery in it, it all seemed to work really well. I haven't loaded any film in there because there's no back on it. There's no film back. So I need to get a film back. And once I can get a film back on this camera, I can then feature it on the channel, go out and shoot it and see how it performs. But I'm pretty confident. And I've gone through all the shutters already. Pretty confident that it'll work quite well. It's got this little tiny grip on it as well. And I've got another uh, prism on top where I can just look down and shoot from waist level, albeit I've got to put my eye on there. But um, a fantastic little camera. And it's also got a 250 millimeter lens with it as well. So I'm looking forward to trying this out in future on the channel but for today let's talk about the Nikon F5 and this I must admit is in very good condition bearing in mind back in the day uh, this camera was produced between 1996 and 2004 and I'd say it was used for professional uh, photographers maybe journalists, maybe sports photographers, uh, news press photographers, and I can only imagine that many of these on the market are pretty battered today, but this one is in good condition, mainly because it was my mate's granddad's and it's been in the loft for quite a long while. Now I'm not going to go over all the features of this camera because there's far too many to talk about and to be honest I don't think I'll use 99% of the features that's on this camera anyway. Apart from its five focus zones and its fantastic automatic focus system and its metering system, eight bursts a second if I fancy taking photographs of Linford Christie coming up to his last furlong, does he still run? I don't think he does. Anyway, who's the other guy? Urgent Bolt. And also take advantage of its one eight thousandth of a second shutter speed. That'll be fun. Or even the rapid re, or even the rapid rewind, or even the rapid rewind, <laughs> rapid re rapid rewind. I can't say it. Or even the rapid rewind. <laughs> or the super fast rewind, or even some of the custom functions that this has got inside its computer. And instead, I'm just gonna load some HP5 into this camera, go out for a walk and enjoy shooting it. It does weigh a ton. It's, when you put it in your hand, you just think, oh my God, this is gonna be so heavy walking around. Um, so I might have to put a strap on on. I might even have to put a camera strap on the camera, for a better word, and uh, just to hold the weight a little tiny bit, because this thing is quite heavy when it's in your hand. And if I'm walking about quite a while, uh, I certainly don't want my arm falling off or working still drop this on me foot. So let's get out, shoot it, and I'll tell you what I think. And I know what you're thinking, I've put a Sigma lens on it. It's the only lens that I've got that fits Nikon cameras. There's a lift. See, 
you don't need to imagine where I am. I've come down to the beach to try out this camera, play around with some beachy shots. But more interestingly, I want to find out how good this eight frames a second, this, this uh, fast burst, this rapid burst fire that this camera's got um, on some seagulls. So in the moment, I'm going to try and find some seagulls and go bang, 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 bang on the seagulls, not shoot them literally. And I bought another roll of uh, Ilford HP5 just in case I get a bit too excited and that roll goes pretty quick. So with the sort of uh, photography that I'm doing, there's no reason for me to go into manual mode, you know, and select my own shutter, do my own metering. I'm just trusting the camera's metering system to get my photographs right. So like I said, I'm in aperture priority mode. The camera will select the shutter speed. Um, I've already punched into the camera the film I'm using, which is a 400 ISO speed film. Nothing should go wrong. That's true what they say. It is definitely a heavy lump, and I've been walking around here now for about half an hour looking for photographs. I've only taken 10 shots. But you can see I've got this nice big comfortable strap on the camera on my neck with a bit of a sponge there as well to stop my neck hurting, but it is an heavy lump to walk around with. But saying that, I think the weight of it also, it just feels sturdy in your hands. It feels, everything feels right about it. When you're holding a camera, it just feels like you've got something in your hand and you're gonna go and shoot some business, you know? Um, and also the weight of it makes you feel like you're not gonna, you know, get any camera shake either when you take your photographs, such as if you were shooting at slower shutter speeds because you've got a slower film maybe. Um, you know, if you're shooting a 60th of a second or 30th of a second, it feels like you're not gonna get any camera shake. With the smaller cameras like the OM20 and the OM10s and stuff like that, they're quite light, so it's, it's understandable. But this, it's like a mountain in your hands. And the autofocus as well. I use this lens on my Nikon F90X and I've noticed that the autofocus is so quick, it's so responsive. Um, again, you're not gonna miss a shot, especially if you was a paparazzi shooter, well, like I said, Lingford Christie, uh, Olympic shooter or something, or sports events or what have you. It just feels like this is going to be able to uh, capture the action, um, you know, without any hesitation or, or, or lack of confidence. And you can also put this into um, manual mode, the lens, and also um, autofocus and also constant focus as well. So you can actually follow the, follow the action and the um, focus is constantly looking for you. Clever stuff. You've got three metering modes on here. You've got your spot metering, your matrix metering, and your center weighted metering as well. At the moment, I've got it on center weighted um, as I'm going around taking my photographs. So, you know, hopefully uh, that's doing the job. But you've still got to do a little tiny bit yourself. You know, if I've got sky and bright areas and dark areas, I've still got to try and average a little bit. But on the back of the button there, I've got a, an auto exposure lock. So once I'm happy with a happy medium, I can press the auto exposure lock. That will lock the exposure from um, changing as I'm moving the lens around, trying to compose a shot. And everything is in your hands. This, you know, even like I said, the metering system sitting on the side here. Um, you've got your modes on your, on your fingertips. You've got two dials either, either side here. One's probably for your aperture. Uh, the other one's for shutter speeds. Also the menu system. But with this lens, it's not recognizing the, um, uh, the f-stop inside the uh, viewfinder, inside the electronic viewfinder, but I can see what aperture I am in the little tiny mirror bit at the top of the lens, if that makes sense. There's a little tiny, little tiny spy hole, so when I look through the viewfinder, I can see manually what f-stop I'm at, which is f11. And I know what you're thinking, when you saw me doing portrait modes, I've still got my hand over this way, all cack-handy like this, you know, like normal. There is a small button on the side of the camera. If I flick that, that becomes my shutter release like so. But I can't get used to that at the moment. I have been playing around with it, but I just can't get used to it because if I need to change my settings, I have to go back this way anyway. So I kind of think to myself, is that really used? I don't know, maybe some like it, maybe some don't. Let us know in the comments. If you've got one of these and you like using that little button on the side, <laughs> And another thing about that button on the side is if you've got that switched on and you've got your hand here, you're going to accidentally start maybe firing off some shots. But above all, at the moment, I'm really enjoying myself walking around with this camera, mainly because it's something new, but it just feels so solid in my hands, honestly. And if I wasn't making a vlog, I'd probably be getting all sorts of different angles and, and rummaging around elsewhere, but I've got a GoPro and I'm talking to you guys. I can also take off the viewfinder or the prism at the top. 
so then I can use it at waist level, but my eyes ain't that good, so I'm not going to be able to see what I'm shooting, but maybe that's quite handy for getting low shots, uh, you know, and clicking the fire button if you want to get some low stuff. Anyway, um, I want to go and grab some chips and maybe a saveloy, see if we can get some seagulls and burst off some of this film. Chips and a saveloy, please, mate. Any salt vinegar? Yes, please. Lashings of salt and vinegar. that off my face, get that off my neck. Oh, you can feel it around your neck as well, walking around with that. Okay, I'm gonna sit here now, eat my saveloy and chips. You all right? Probably Americans are going, what's a saveloy? That's a saveloy, it's a bit like an hot dog, but tastes a lot worse. It's all right though, since my ketchup on my chips. And the best thing about this is, those seagulls are real greedy, so, they're going to um, come buzzing around me because they'll smell the salt and vinegar. I've taken 13 photographs already. Now, I've not really come out to get any master photography here. Um, not that I could get any anyway, but you know what I mean? So I'm just bursting off, trying out the camera. So I'm going to just whack the rest of the roll off on these seagulls at like eight frames a second and see what I can get. Oh, chips now. Better than that salad. Me. Well that went quick, um, that's so much fun, it only lasted about 10 seconds, I'm at the end of the film. <laughs> <laughs> So that was the photographs of the seagulls and that was 2013 expired HP5, Ilford HP5 that I was shooting and I developed that in 510 Pyro. It seemed a less wasteful way of doing that sort of uh, photographs on an old expired film rather than grabbing a new film and, and doing the same thing. So that's why I used an expired HP5 and they came out all right. And if you're wondering, I was using the uh, Veloit 360 film holder to DSLR scan my negatives. I'll be showing this more on my channel. So thanks guys for sending me this brilliant little bit of kit. So the Nikon F5, what a camera this is. And it made a big change for me to go out shooting this camera as opposed to what I normally shoot in my little tiny classics such as the OM20 and my Chinon CE5 and, and the other cameras that I've got. This was fantastic. I really did enjoy shooting it. And with the F5, I found it very similar to the F90X. So having this camera for so many years and knowing it inside out, it wasn't too hard to just get hold of this uh, F5 and go out and play with this. Obviously, this has got a lot more advancements than this camera has. But like I said, I'm not going to use hardly any of the um, technology that's inside this camera for my day-to-day -day shooting. And I really enjoyed shooting eight frames a second on those seagulls. You know, it might be a waste of film, but I found it really fun. It only lasted a few seconds. A bit like a roller coaster ride, but I wouldn't mind loading up more of that HP5 expired stuff that I've got and trying that out again sometime. And you'll notice in the video, I threw the seagulls a couple of chips just so I can get a flock of them around so I could start shooting them. It's not ideal to do that. Uh, you know, they can become a bit of a pest, but people do. And seagulls also go in the bins and find them what they can find to eat, and they nick chips out of your hands as well little saucy buggers. And all the other cameras appear to be in good condition. You can tell that 
My mate's granddad was a great Nikon fan and even a Bronica fan as well. I don't know what happened to the film back. I did ask my mate if there's a film back anywhere and he said there wasn't. So obviously it's got lost along the way. But hey ho, I can get one. And once I do, I'll show this camera on the channel for you guys to see. And if any of you guys used the Nikon F5 back in the day or you had one or you used it for your photography, let us know in the comments what you used it for and what advantages it gave you with your photography. I'd be really be interested to know uh, some stories on that. So let us know in the comments. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Massive thanks to my mate for lending me these cameras. Thanks to everyone that supports the channel. I really do appreciate it. Hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.